Excellent. Good evening. Hello, 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 everybody. And Hi. Hello, Keith. How are you? I'm good, Natalie. How are you? I'm really good. Hey, Ronnie, how are you? Very good, thanks. Good. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. So we are going to pad out the next couple of minutes um, just to make sure that everything is working and make sure that everybody starts watching. I can see we've got a few people joining us already. Good, um, good, good. So, yeah, we're going to keep this running for a couple of minutes and then we will get on with the show show, as they say. Mm -hmm. And just to say hello to everybody who will be tuning in, to everybody who will be watching us on the replay as well. If you are watching mm. on the replay, please feel free to still ask questions, write comments, because we'll pick those up afterwards. For anybody who hasn't tuned in to one of our Facebook Lives before, I'm Natalie and I support Ronnie from Guitar Weekends on their digital content. This is Ronnie. Give us a wave, Ronnie. That's me. Um, who is the owner of Guitar Weekends. And we are joined this evening by one of our, or by our newest tutor, actually, the amazing Keith Pebberty. Hi, Keith. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm really good. I never get that sort of introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, got to have him up. Yeah. And we've also had a few people already comment on our post to say, um, how much of an amazing player and teacher you are. So thank you uh, to those people who are engaging already. We've got Jim already joining us saying hi, Ronnie and Keith. Hello, Jim. How are you doing, Jim? Um, you did make it. Yeah, Good. absolutely. Thanks very much. If anybody is watching and they know somebody who would enjoy listening to Keith talk all about the base and our upcoming base boot camp, to be um, fair, there's going to be a lot more about Keith and his background, and Ronnie's going to do an introduction to him as our newest tutor, and you get to learn more about his background. Um, and what makes him an excellent compliment to our team. And if you have any questions, do just type them below. As I said, if you know anybody that would enjoy watching, share this video, tag them in the comments, help us share and get this out a bit wider. Um, let us know if you're, oh, Jim said he's canceled his prior meeting. He did, he did tell me that actually before the, 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 yeah, I know. Okay. That's good. Let us know if you have any questions at all for Keith at any point throughout this evening, pop them into the comments. Ronnie will read them out uh, so mm -hmm. we can ask Keith as we go. Uh, if not, then I'll pick them up at the end. I'm also going to jump off in a second and I'll add some links into the comments should anything uh, be referenced to do with Guitar Weekends and more courses where you can um, learn directly from Keith. But... I think we've got a good 20, 25 people jumping on. So I'm going to jump off and leave you guys to have a chat. All right. And That's I will great. Thanks, Natalie. go back in 20 minutes or so. Okie dokie. Great. See you. See you later. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we're just going to have a chat. We just, Keith, you and I are just going to chat through a couple of things. I do know there's quite a few people who can't make this evening. And so they'll watch it on recording. So that'll be fine. Oh. Um, so, Keith, I suppose the, the major thing to, to well, everybody's interested to know who you are and you know i'm particularly interested why why did you pick the bass or did the bass pick you or is it just one of many it's really strange really i was at school when i was at school i had a couple of friends that that played a little bit of guitar and there were there were mutterings of a school band uh which i had sort of a mild interest in really i mean my interest in playing hadn't really not well playing bass hadn't really quite kicked in uh, we had a really supportive school teacher and just towards the last sort of couple of months of of leaving school he bought some instruments and there was a bass guitar sat in the corner and actually uh, my elder brother uh, had played or oh, many moons ago in in a rock band and, and there was this old disheveled one string bass sat in the corner throughout my childhood that i never touched uh, I mean, I just, I, for some reason, I just wasn't inquisitive, so I never touched it. And for my 16th birthday coming up, I just got this notion that I fancied playing the bass, and uh, I hounded my parents to get me a bass guitar. And uh, my dad was having none of it. Uh, and uh, as all good mums do, you know, come the 16th birthday, I got an envelope with a couple of quid, went down to some local bar where the bass player was selling uh, a bass and I bought this bass. And within within three months, I'd met a couple of school kids whose parents were running a little show band. And uh, before I knew it, was earning, you know, was learning covers and, 
and out doing gigs, you know, within the space of three or four months of having a, an instrument. And I mean, you were earning money on these gigs, were you, Keith? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was sort of 16, 16, uh, probably 16 and a half. And I was in a show band that was run by uh, a couple of parents. And we were out in the Northeast playing at social clubs and, and social events, sort of uh, anywhere from, you know, one, two, three times a week. Uh, so that was that was my my introduction to playing the bass was like getting a bass, some mm. songs straight in a band really. But do you have have you played other instruments as well? You play a bit of guitar, I think. Don't uh, you? Well, I, yeah, that came later in in life. When I was at school, I played a, a bit a bit of brass. I played a little bit of uh, baritone and tenor. Uh, mm. And I had a great teacher in school who kept trying to cajole me into joining the local brass band and I was having none of it. So I played and I read music at the time, but I mean, I had no interest in it. It was just something I did like you did maths really. And uh, I kind of gave that up as soon as I could foolishly. And it wasn't mm. until I started generating that interest myself a little bit later on uh, that I, I returned to that. So, I mean, I always liked music but mm. uh for some reason at school you know I, I don't i can't remember that far back now so it's difficult for me to say exactly why it never happened at school but i did play I'll, i I'll, did play brass i'll tell you what keith somebody i think richard's just reminded me actually in the chat that when, when you ever read my newsletters i really do lay it in hard for number one the ukulele then it's the banjo. And then, unfortunately, I do have a go at the bass. So I've got to eat all my words <laughs> and welcome you on board. Well, because truly, yeah. We, yeah, as a business, we've been remiss, I think, in serving people who play bass guitar. And I think we're going to try and rectify that this year with you coming on with the courses. But, I mean, before we go into that, you you, you went abroad to do uh, uh, to be, to be do music education, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, yeah, I so I started playing sort of, 79 1979 1980 mm. and pretty early on uh i realized that it was what i wanted to do uh and a friend of mine told me about this place in america and it was called the musicians institute in in california hollywood california and the whole mm. thing about that that place was it wasn't a formal place like in in the uk you could go and do a formal degree uh, but so many of them were actually were double bass at that time, so it was hard to find anywhere you could go playing electric bass. And mm. The whole thing about this place was it, is, it was in the middle of LA, the centre of the, the music industry, and it was serviced by some of the top pros in the world. So if someone was in town and they could be, you know, acquired, they'd go into this place and they'd, uh, they'd give seminars and things like that. So I thought, well, it sounded great. I applied to it. Uh, I was a trainee chemical engineer at the time, working for a company called ICI, and uh, I kind of did a deal with them, and, and they paid part of my tuition fee. So I went across to the states, and that was in 1982. I mean, the course wasn't quite uh, what I thought it was going to be, and if I'm being honest, I wasn't at the level to take advantage of any course really, because I really wanted to go to Berkeley, but I just knew. I was too new to playing uh, but uh, yeah yeah whilst i was there i mean the great thing about that town is i mean i got to see some incredible musicians i mean musicians that i've been listening to for the previous sort of three three years or so in my playing time and and that was that was an inspiration beyond belief really you know to kind of see mm. the people that you were ad admired as a young musician uh, was 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 just incredible. You you could go out any night of the week to any club and just see world famous names and world class players, which was probably more of an education than what than, than that that I received at college really. Yeah, in fact, I left the in course. I left the course. I did six months. Uh, I looked ahead at what was coming on the course, and then everything was on VHS. And I had a one of the first recording Walkmans. I mean, so I'm sure none of the folks that are watching will, uh, they'll be far too young to remember that, but I bought a recording Walkman and I sat with my notebook and I recorded the soundtrack of all the videos that I wanted to watch and I took notes and that's what I came home with. Uh, sorry, sorry, Keith, just as you're talking there, there's this chit-chat going on as far as the messaging is concerned between a couple of the weekenders. 
I mean, it's a real humdinger of a conversation going. And somebody asked, he wants advice from you about, I think it's Chris actually, investing in a base. Any advice? Don't bother answering that now. I think everybody else is answering it for you. I think <laughs> things like just get one and, uh, you know, stop dilly-dallying. But, uh, but, but, but let's go on. So you came back to UK then from, from the States. Yeah. And then you've had, I mean, I mean, if anybody reads your bio on the website, you, you played with anybody who's anybody. So do you want to give a quick summary of that? And which, which, which is your most sort of favorite? Okay. If there is one. If that's I'm going to start by question. saying, really, uh, I mean, that's, this is something that whether, whenever I'm asked, I kind of take a back seat because, uh, mm. and I don't mean this flippantly at all. It's just, it's not a big deal at all to me. Uh, so I think that anybody that's been playing playing long enough and gets to a certain level of ability uh, in the industry is going to meet and work with somebody famous because all of these folks are out there earning a living. So, I mean, there's hardly anybody that I know that's been playing the same length of time that I have that hasn't rubbed shoulders with, with somebody. Uh, I mean, I've kind of been very lucky, and if you read the list of, as, as a who's who, whilst there's always plenty of folks that I've worked with more people, uh, I'll go to my mm. grave being quite happy and quite satisfied that I've worked with a you know quite a wide range of people. And it's you know it's it's the Stones, it's Sting, it's Phil Collins, it's people from the television like uh, Peter mm. Kerr, people from the world of jazz like uh, you know uh, Matt Nightingale and Tommy Smith and and Bob Mincer. So I've been. I've been, you know, just really fortunate. And I wouldn't say there's a standout because usually when you come across people like that, uh, you're there to do a job and you don't have time for all the frivolities. It's just getting your head down and doing your best to kind of get through the situation as professionally as possible, you know. It's whether you're in the Albert Hall or in the local pub around the corner. Yeah, standing yeah I mean, it's the same yeah, thing. I've played at so many nice venues. I mean, the Albert Hall is, is a great place. I think I've played there three or four times. But for me, uh, doing that is no different from playing the mucky duck down the road mm. because it's who you're working for and the people that have bought the tickets have the same expectation. And regardless of what I may have done and what opinion I might have of myself or somebody else might have. The fact that I worked with Sting 15 years ago is irrelevant if I can't pick up the instrument now and do a good job with whoever I'm yeah. working with at the moment. And that's that's the test, really, because a good musician's consistent. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, I'd like to think that I still do a, a half-decent job when, when I strap the tank on, you know. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll, we'll all the all the weekenders will find out if they come on. Actually, it leads nicely into the main the main thing here because we're getting questions on the side saying, you know, well, you got this base boot camp coming up and this and that, yeah. And it, and it comes back to a conversation you and I had right at the very beginning. Your <coughs> philosophy and attitude to teaching, yeah. you know, people who think they're at this level and um, may or may not be, and people who think they're down here and actually may be better than they are. Yeah. So th the courses that we've got lined up, they're going to be online. There are eventually going to be some mini breaks, residentials as well. And then, you you know, you do lots of one-on-one -on -one teaching. And then there's these are group courses. What's your attitude towards, you know, teaching a group? Well, how would you go about doing it? Or what do you do go about doing it? Teaching a group, it depends. It depends on the group and it depends on the environment. So, I mean, in person, it's it's much easier because you get a yeah. real good sense a real good feel uh the the look in someone's eye the body language the turn tells you whether they've got something and then it's very easy to angle what you're doing to kind of make sure that you that you meet everyone's requirements and you you pick things up uh the, the odd thing about teaching is that so many of us have a false interpretation of what our, our abilities like so we either dampen ourselves down and we think, actually, I'm not very good at this. So we kind of create this barrier thinking, I'll never do that. I can't do that because why could, how could I simply understand that? And the reverse of that is there are so many of us that actually think we're much better than, than, than we are. Uh, and that's a tough thing. So you, as, as an educator, and I've been teaching for 30, 30 years now in lots of different settings, formal uh, college and university settings and private individually and in and bespoke base workshop settings so 
I've done a little bit of everything. And uh, I take nothing for granted. So I teach everybody the same. And it's almost like the Greek spin, spinning plates thing. I'm sure you've seen those acts, those novelty acts where they're running around mm -hmm. the stage. And that's kind of how I approach teaching a group. So I'm looking for the person in the corner that's kind of sort of backing off and the person in that yeah. corner who's playing their favourite licks and slowly mm -hmm. filtering material through them in the hope of actually catching people and making sure that I challenge everybody at the right level so that you can help people learn. Because the best thing about teaching really is getting that moment where the penny drops and you see the penny drop and mm -hmm. uh, there's an understanding. Mm -hmm. And then when they get, when somebody gets the understanding, then the motion towards actually being able to make that happen, you know, by physically playing is, is much easier really. So understanding is, is sometimes the biggest barrier to, to, to learning. Because once you understand the concept of, and what you're trying to achieve, doing yeah. it is much more straightforward. So let me, I mean, a question has been raised by one, I think Norman. He was asking, you know, for the bass guitar boot camp. Yeah. And maybe you can explain that phrase boot camp because it might, uh, I know, trepidation in people's knees um he's asking is that for complete beginners so yeah. nobody as a of a of a higher grade would get anything from that is that is that uh, I, for me it's 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 like a conditioning course so if you're a complete beginner then yes it's going to be really valuable because you're going to pick up a chunk of stuff and that's then going to enable you to take advantage of any courses or anything that you would want to do after that uh, mm. If you're somebody that thinks, well, actually, I don't really need to do that because I've got it all together. I've been playing for a couple of years. Uh, mm. I've, it's rare that you come across students that have got it all together. And there's always something. And often it's the most surprising and it can be the most menial thing. And you think, I've, I've, ne I've never tried that before. You know, it could be a stupid thing like the way you angle your hand, the way you hold your hand, the way that you you sit with a bass, the way that you think about a concept. Uh, you know, so uh, I think it's one of those things. Uh, if you had an opportunity to take a one-to-one -one lesson with uh, a, a known player who you respected and it was affordable, mm. uh, you'd go and do it. I would go and do it. Uh, and I still do take listen, lessons every now and then of, from world famous players. You know, uh, obviously it's a little bit more expensive than a couple of quid, but that's by the by. So if you get the opportunity to take a one to one lesson with somebody and it's affordable, it's very rare that you're going to walk away from something having learned something. Uh, and you can't. I don't think you can put a value and a price on learning a, a, a chunk of important information because that could be the difference between getting you from here to here. Is a, is a bass player in musician. Mm. So the boot camp is there is a mopping up. It's a preparatory course to get to get beginners on stream, but also for somebody that's a little bit more more able, it's a way that I can kind of sort of get under the skin and and help bolster their understanding. So that the next thing that they decide to do, uh, course wise, they can take the most advantage of. Yeah, it's like uh, I think. Colin was asking on the side there, he said, what's the best advice for being able to jam better? And, you know, this boot camp is not about that. This is about basics. It's kind of a, a musical MOT, I describe it as, for yeah. people who are slightly more yeah. advanced. Yeah, yeah. But and that, when you... I mean, that, that's, a diff, that's, a, that's a toughie to answer because, I mean, mm. if I was going to answer that question directly, I'd be coming, I'd be coming back at you with, with a bunch of questions saying, well, jam, is it this? Is it that? What do you mean? Is it that? So before you know where you are, you could have yeah. that long of, of questions that need answering before you, before you get to that, you know, uh, that, that one answer. So, but, but but just I just I forgot I went off the off piece there. So right. the boot camp question, the boot camp title, that really just means this is a condemn. It's not really a boot camp as in the military fashion, is it? No, you're not, not, not. you're not going to murder people on this thing. No, that's uh, a term. Blood coming from their fingers and stuff. No, it's a term. It's a, it's a terminology. I guess I guess the term is 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 an intense uh, is a, is an intense course where people that are beginners can develop a really strong foundation in their playing so that they can go ahead and take advantage of something. And somebody that 
that is more more able can pick up some some hints and tips and some methodologies that are going to really solidify the foundation of their future learning so as if so if somebody came on as a raw beginner yeah. on the boot camp they've got two months before the enhar the harmonic layering yeah course. is that the sort of, i mean are they going to be able to go on that yeah, i mean yeah i mean it, that that depends on their level of understanding but for me the harmonic mm -hmm. layering course whilst it sounds like a really fancy pants titled course and it's it's ambiguous and it's vague the beauty of it is that it works on every level so if you're somebody with a core knowledge uh, of yeah. all the beginner attributes uh, you'll be able to take advantage of the harmonic layering course at your level and i can challenge you at your level and give you something that's appropriate so that you can enjoy playing and that's going to help you develop learn and flourish more similarly mm -hmm. if you're much more able uh, i can actually put you know I can push you so much you, you'll not believe it if that's what you want but uh there's a way to push people so just because you think you're good doesn't mean you're mm. going to get pushed in the way that you think you're going to be pushed i'm going to push you in a way that you can show me in your playing that you understand it and you can do because the because the proof's mm. in the pudding uh you know, somebody yeah. who who can do, who says, yeah, I've got great technique, I've got this, that's all fantastic. The proof's in the pudding. So if you can't strap an instrument on and actually deliver and play, then there's a barrier behind you that's behind that that's preventing you doing something. Usually it's an understanding. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be technique, sometimes it can be something else. So the whole idea of the boot camp and also the harmonic layering course is to kind of draw that all together so that we can turn all those ambiguities in someone's understanding and their playing ability into into practical playing ability because if you if you don't leave the courses uh being able to play better or do what i want you to do uh, mm. you're not going to think it's value for money and you're certainly not going to think i'm value for money and you're certainly not going to take advantage of a future course so but but there's going to be lots of playing on these courses and how what about know-how stroke dare i mention the word theory is there going to be much of that in in these courses yeah i think uh, yeah i mean uh, theory is one of those things i mean if you plug into social media in any way and particularly uh bass players and oh i mean i'm a member of so many so many groups now because i like to watch the thread of what people discuss and mm. uh, every single day i'm completely amazed by the threads of conversation and the, the thing that amazes me the most is the is the lack of understanding and i don't say that in a pious uh you know a, a way at all so everything for me is based around a, th a theoretical concept that doesn't mean that you can't play if you don't have an understanding of it but mm. there will be a limit there will be a limit and a lot of people fear theory my my way of delivering music theory is in a practical sense you know it's a little bit like learning the word and you can you don't learn the word and before learning the alphabet Mm. So the alphabet mm. is a given if you want to learn a language, and then we learn the word and. Once we've learned the word mm. and, it's still a meaningless thing until we start using it in its many concepts and its many variations. And playing the bass and learning the language of music is, is exactly the same. But, you know, I'm a firm believer that actually music theory is a doddle to learn. It's so easy. It's just how it's learned how it's mm. practiced really so yeah, yeah i mean one of the interesting things keith sorry, sorry. to interrupt there is that um yeah yeah we discussed the playing side you've also got a lot to your string to your bow we've got to pack, pack up now i think but in terms of arranging and composition and all, all bits and bobs you, you do all that sort of stuff as well so all that will come to play in these and oh, by the way in how and the harmonic layering one is in two parts isn't it, it part is one and then part, part two. one part two yeah. So, yeah okay just want to make sure that's clear i think we probably we are yes. pain, that means we're wrapping up we are going to start to wrap up um again could listen to both of you kind of discuss all things bass and guitar 
all night as I as I always do enjoy these sessions. I'm just keen, I was really keen to quickly jump on. I know Ronnie, you were picking up some of the com comments as we as they went. Thank you to everybody who's been commenting this evening and everybody who's been joining in the conversation amongst yourselves. It's been truly lovely to watch and see everybody discuss bass, guitar and learning together. Um, a couple of other questions that came through just to kind of get your advice, really, Keith, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I did kind of mention Chris's comment at the very start, but he's a, Chris is a guitarist considering investing in a bass yeah. and learning. Yeah. What, what's the key kind of piece of advice that he should walk away from this evening okay. about that? I, I, I say the same thing to everyone, whether uh, it's a mum or dad buying it for a 12 year old child or, or an adult. Uh, go to a music store or a couple of music stores and just pick up a bunch of instruments and play them and buy whatever feels good to you. Forget the badge, forget what you think you want to buy uh, and buy something that feels good in your hands because that's going to make you want to play. You're going to get a decent sound out of any reasonable instrument that you, that you, you know, buy in a music store and getting them tweaked or set up is relatively easy to do but buy something that feels good in your hands and fits your hands makes you want to play it and, and that's that's pretty much it really brilliant that's really good to know and again uh, we've got we uh, answered some questions around what to expect um and a lot of people are tagging in their friends and some and richard uh, cox you might be able to add some comment onto this one as well actually Richard yeah, Cox says there's nothing yeah. wrong with, I can't say that name, Epiphanies or Squires. Epiphones and Squires. There we go. <laughs> um, but put some decent strings on them, he says. <laughs> yeah, but, but hang on, Richard's also just commented on Lynn Flanagan's boot camp. Now, Lynn is a, a jazz guitarist. Um, but, you know, the great thing about Lynn, he's a guitarist, not a bass player. But oh. I was, I'm always fascinated to listen to a teacher showing a student a bit about the bass and understanding the bass line because it adds yeah. so much to the six stringers knowledge you uh, know it it really does so if you're even a six string player learn learn a bit about the bass the yeah. bass is the foundation of 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 all of all music really so i mean if you're a guitar player wanting to get to groups with harmony or a piano player i mean i've got piano players that follow my own uh channel because they they quite like the way that i'll talk about harmony uh and bass is where it's at really because it's the root movement of all the harmony so and it often is the leader to helping us understand about chords and as you know chords are king and they're the foundation of everything that we play really actually keith that's a really good point it is in the bio on the website your um your bass academy so I would encourage everybody to go to the to the website and check out Keith and just follow the link to your to your YouTube channel and your 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 academy just to see you can get some idea of what what you do how you teach and what it, what it might be like so it'd be good for people definitely and I've just popped up the link on the screen um, for anybody who's now looking to go and book on to Keith's upcoming bass guitar boot camp which we'd one hundred percent recommend you do and you'd be very very welcome if you know anybody else who would be interested please do pass on the links and uh stay stay in touch and um keep asking questions and commenting and, and talking amongst each other yeah and, and the other thing is if i'm i'm going to get the i'm going to get the, a dirty look from you here keith if people have got questions or suggestions for what might they'd like to know about the boot win the, within the boot camp send them through you can you can vet them and decide whether yeah, they're, yeah, they're relevant or not and can I say, uh, this is the first sort of stream of this nature that I've done, and and having a string of people with comments pop up on one side is uh, is great. So I mean, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, good. it's always good. It's always good. Thanks Absolutely. for sharing. You know, and it, it's nice to to see so many folks out there w with an interest in really wanting to play better bass. So uh, I hope to see a few of you on the up and coming courses. Uh, I guarantee you'll enjoy it. And I guarantee whatever level of playing that you're at, you're going to walk away having learned something, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, you know, if, if, you, if you're if you unsure, I'd say give it a go. Trust your instinct, it's instincts and come along with a liberal dose of enthusiasm and expecting to roll your sleeves up and do some hard work. And if you do that, you're absolutely going to walk away a more informed and a better musician. Guarantee it.
And I'll tell you what, Keith, I can't wait for when we get the residential going, where we're actually in a room physically with everybody. And then, you know, coming back to Colin's point, jamming will then be the order of the day, I guess, in terms of the ultimate aim. If you can improvise and just follow other people like that, that's the best thing you should be able to do. Yeah, I mean, you could probably tell I can talk all day about bass and, and, and music because it, it's, it's kind of why I do. It's my passion. But in a residential setting face to face, the key thing for me is that anybody that comes along is playing most of the time. So any talk, any chit chat is the precursor to allowing people to play because that's the thing that's going to make you better. Definitely. But the great thing is that all the feedback that we've had so far for all the live courses that we've done online have been absolutely five star. And I, I think that's the great thing about Guitar Weekends is, is what they're offering online is such a replica of an experience that you can expect face to face. So um, well done to Ronnie and the team for, for delivering such great online experiences. And, um, yeah, and I've, and I've, sorry, I've just I've just noticed that Martin Short has turned up. I think the bass is probably his fourth instrument. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so welcome, Martin. I'm seeing, okay, are, are we all wrapping up now then, Natalie? We are yeah? wrapping up. Yeah, we've got on 30, 35 minutes this evening. Thanks to everybody okay. who's stayed with us. And for all your questions, and um, all the links are in the comments, I will wrap up with a final link directing you back to the Basecamp course page. And look forward to seeing some of you on the course, hopefully. Well, Keith does anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, and me too. And I'm just now going to shoot off and try and get a barber's appointment somewhere. I'm going to go and I'll, teach. I'll, I'll <laughs> book these things. I'll, I'll, it's coming out of, all over the place. Cool. Still well, good. have anyway, a lovely, all... have a lovely evening, everybody, and we will see you all very soon. We've got a very special Facebook Live next month at the end of May, so mm -hmm. do keep an eye out. Um, mm. Ron's been planning uh, something quite entertaining, let's put it that way. And it's yeah. going to be a really good session. So stay tuned. We'll be publishing more details of that in due course. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, Natalie. Thanks, Keith. And thanks, everybody, thanks, for coming thanks, along. Ronnie. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone. Bye. -bye. You're done.